Hello and welcome. You're watching COVID-19 and I'm Min San He. Authorities appear to be keeping the daily tally within the 100 range, but given the presence of sporadic cluster infections, uncertainty remains over the course of the latest outbreak here in the country. We start the program now with the latest numbers on the pandemic with our Kwon Soa and related news with our Yun Jung Min. So I hear there's been a slight rise in new cases on this Tuesday here on the local front. Yes, Sonny, but it's not really an exponential rise given the fact that on Mondays we usually have a lower number of cases due to the lower number of tests conducted over the weekend. And also we have been in the two below 200 cases on a daily basis for a sixth consecutive day. With that, let's take a closer look at the figures. We have 136 new cases reported this Tuesday, raising the total to 21. 1,432. Unfortunately, five new deaths were reported, raising the death toll to 341. Uh, but we're also seeing some positive figures here. More than 200 people less in quarantine and uh, almost 340 new recoveries were reported in the past 24 hours. And uh, if we take a look at our graph, uh, the month of September started with uh, single-day caseloads in the 200s. But as I said before, uh, for the sixth consecutive day, the numbers have been in the 100s and officials are attributing this to the active participation in the nation's people by abiding by social distancing measures. Uh, but nevertheless, we still have sporadic cluster infections across the nation. Let's take a look at where Tuesday's figures have emerged. We have 67 cases in the capital, Seoul, 31 in Gyeonggi-do province and two in Incheon. So in the metropolitan region, Region, we have exactly 100 new cases this Tuesday, and 98 of those are domestic infections. Also, double digits in other parts of the country, like Gwangju here, which had added some 13 new cases. Meanwhile, we have 16 cases that were imported cases this Tuesday, and including from places like Turkey, four from Turkey, and four cases from India. Now, speaking of India, let's take a look at the hotspots around the world. Of course, of course, India has become the country with the second highest number of infections in the world just recently. It added some 75,000 new cases on Tuesday and uh, on the Monday, that is, in the past 24 hours, I should say, as of noon Korea time. And uh, U.S. has almost 6.5 million cases now, Brazil 4.1 million cases. If we go over to other places around the world, South Africa's death toll has surpassed 15,000 and also our Argentina has surpassed the 10,000 mark when it comes to the death toll. This is a place that is adding around 10,000 cases on a daily basis. And uh, with that, the total number of infections around the world stands at almost 27.5 million with almost 200,000 cases added on a daily basis. And we have around 897,000 fatalities and almost 19.6 million recoveries. And those are the figures I have for now. But but I'll have more updates from the afternoon briefing in a bit. Back to you, Sunny. All right, so I thank you for that. Now, for more on the latest with regard to the pandemic here in Korea, I have our Yoon Jung Min in the studio. Welcome, Jung Min. Hello, Sunny. Right, so we've been seeing fewer COVID-19 cases in the country, and uh, the government says this is owing to our participation in the social distancing guidelines. Tell us more, Chung Min. You're right, Sunny. So it appears the government's enhanced social distancing measures are having tangible effects. Uh, for six days in a row now, there have been fewer than 200 new COVID-19 cases in the country. Well, considering that in late August, the daily uh, caseload even surpassed over uh, 400, it's an encouraging sign. Take a look. We thank the residents in the capital area for their efforts. Thanks to their participation in our social distancing campaign, we expect the number of new infections to further decline this week. The health official asked citizens to continue taking part in social distancing to curb the outbreak in spite of the disruptions to their daily lives. Health authorities, however, are still on high alert because cluster infections are still being reported in the capital Seoul and the surrounding areas. Also, over 20 percent of the recent cases were untraceable, meaning they had unknown infection routes. As of today, the total number of patients in critical condition fell, to a, sh fell a shade 
lower at 151, which is still one of the highest figures reported since the outbreak began. With the growing number of patients who are seriously ill, the metropolitan area is running out of ICU hospital beds. And that's all the more reason why we should keep our guards up. That's also the reason why the government has extended its social distancing guidelines for the metropolitan area to 2.5, right? That's right, Sunny. So as you said, Korea has extended its social distancing, uh, enhanced social distancing level 2.5 in the capital area for another week. That's until this Sunday. Well, in addition to franchise coffee shops, um, eating and drinking are also banned inside franchise bakeries and ice cream parlors. Only virtual services are allowed at churches in the capital area and some other cities. In Seoul, all bars and restaurants must close at 9 p.m. The government also recommended citizens outside this whole area to abide by level two social distancing rules until September 20th. Take a listen. We are getting steady reports of new infections nationwide, and 22 percent of these cases are untraceable. So we can't let our guards down. Please be sure to abide by the rules so that we bring an end to enhanced social distancing this week. Now, just to remind you, while the enhanced social distancing measures are in effect, only takeout and delivery orders are available at franchise coffee shops, bakeries and ice cream parlors. To enter, you also need to register your name and contact information through a QR code on your smartphone or write them down by hand. Restaurants can operate normally during the daytime, but only takeout and delivery services will be allowed from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Right, Changmin, let's hope that these efforts bear fruit in the near future. Now, health authorities are also concerned about the upcoming Chuseok holiday, and there are related guidelines in effect. That's right. The government is uh, asking people to refrain from traveling during Chuseok holidays, which starts at the at, uh, end of this month. This is usually a time when many people here in South Korea travel to their hometowns to visit their families and uh, relatives. But due to the COVID-19 outbreak this year, the government is putting uh, strict measures in place, warning that mass migration could lead to resurgence of the virus. The government is set to decide whether to designate a five-day holiday weekend running from September 30th to October 4th as a special antivirus period. Take a look. We ask the public to move around as little as possible and stay home during the holiday. The authorities will also tighten disease prevention measures at high-risk facilities. Those include department stores, traditional markets, logistics centers, and nursing hospitals. Trains will not carry passengers at full capacity, with only window seats being sold. The government is also asking people refrain from visiting cemeteries and ancestral tombs, but instead gather online. Right. Changwin, one final question before you go. Is the government coming up with any measures to assist those who are financially struggling amid the pandemic? Well, it is, Sunny. So the government is working on its fourth supplementary budget bill to cushion the economic impact of COVID-19. Um, the extra budget is worth almost a six billion U.S. dollars. The budget will uh, be used to provide financial support to the unemployed, freelancers, low-income earners and merchants. Earlier, the government had handed out stimulus checks of up to eight $850 to um, all households. The government aims to distribute those payments before the Chuseok holiday. It is also working on measures to stabilize the price of food and other basic necessities. That is good to know. All right, Chongmin, thank you very much for that coverage. I'll see you again soon. See you later. Right, it's time now for the regular afternoon briefing on COVID-19 here in this part of the world. The number of daily infections stands uh, within the 100 range and authorities remain cautious as they seek to better deal with a series of fresh challenges, including the rise in number of patients in critical condition and of cases that have yet to be traced. Now, with regard to the former five people lost their lives on this Tuesday, as our Kwon mentioned, and Korea's death toll stands at 341, raising the country's fatality rate to 1.59%. Also, sporadic cluster infections continue nationwide to include to as individuals that is continue to hold small gatherings for various purposes. The goal at the moment is to push down the daily tally to below 50 ahead of the upcoming Chuseok holiday, which is subject which is expected to start on the 30th of September until the 4th 
of October. The briefing is about to start. We'll come back to you with a summary of that afterwards. First, we have Deputy Director Kwon Junuk with the briefing. Let us now begin our regular briefing on the COVID-19 situation in South Korea as of September 8th, Tuesday. We have 120 new local infections and 16 new imported cases. The total caseload now stands at 21,432. Among them, 339 have been fully recovered during the uh, past 24 hours, while 4,455 people are in quarantine. There are 151 patients with severe or critical conditions. We had five additional fatalities. I extend my deepest condolences to the deceased and the members of the bereaved families. First, let us now look at the major updates on domestic infections by region. First, in the city of Seoul, Sarang Jail Church in Songbokgu District, we have found four additional cases being confirmed. In total, we have 1,167 uh, people being confirmed to date. Among them, looking at the age distribution, those above the age of 60 account for about 40.2 percent of the total. Next, related to August 15th Seoul rallies, we have seven additional cases being confirmed, and in total, we have 539 cases. 276 people were from non-metropolitan area, which is even more uh, than people of uh, the residents of the metropolitan area. And related to BF Mobile Telemarketing Call Center in Gangdonggu District, Seoul City, we have four additional cases being confirmed. Uh, we have 22 cases being confirmed to date. Next, moving to Yongdeungpogu uh, District, we have a religious center, and we have the first index case on September 5th, and we have 11 new cases being confirmed, and in total, we have 12 cases being confirmed to date. In Songpagu District in Kupang, uh, Songpa Second Camp, we also carried out contact investment. We have uh, four additional cases, and total now stands at 10. And in relation to uh, Unpyanggu District, a Catholic church, a religious center also, we also had the first index case in early September. We have three additional cases being confirmed, and in total, we have uh, four cases to date. Next, moving to Gyeonggi-do Province, in relation to uh, the Yeji Kindergarten, we have the first case of uh, the index case is, uh, confirmed on 5th of September. We have four additional cases, and we have eight cases so far. And in relation to an online hiking group in the greater capital area, we have five new cases. In total, we have 10 cases being confirmed to date. Next, Daejeon uh, City, we have the Unicity, which is a company that held the information session on health supplement products. We also have nine more uh, patients being confirmed. And we have confirmed that on August 30th, we have the uh, first index case being confirmed at Daejeon Sana. And we have confirmed that 10 of uh, these cases have been uh, related to this information session. And in total, we have 18 cases uh, to date. And as for the critically ill patients, as we mentioned earlier, we have 151 patients with severe or critical conditions by age group. 40.4% of them are in the age group of 70 and next followed by 80s and 60s. Currently, we have 341 deaths and looking at the fatality rates by age group, uh, the fatality rate uh, for those over the age of 80 uh, is above 20, and also it is it ranges uh, between 6.3% uh, for 70s um, and also 1.5% uh, for these uh, 60s. And during the past few uh, weeks, we have uh, 40 uh, fatalities, and we also have 14 of them uh, being untraceable, and also 11 of them are 
related to the Songbukje Church. And looking at the age group, uh, 24 of them were above the age of 80, and also uh, 14 of them are in the 70s. And also, we have confirmed, and we also continue to note uh, that those aged over the age of 60 are the high risk groups, meaning uh, that you need to minimize your physical contact with others. And if you step outside, please wear face masks at all times. And if you have uh, fever or respiratory symptoms, and if you do not feel well, please uh, visit uh, the screening clinic as soon as possible and get tested. And today, we we had a total of 16 new imported cases from abroad and as for the countries we have seen a Turkey for from Turkey and 11 uh, were from Asia four from India and three from Indonesia and next we have some updates on the RND aspects first of all uh, the KCDC continues to note uh, that we are uh, conducting our uh, survey on the antibodies developed among the citizens and we have mentioned the first round of analysis on the July 9th and we have included uh, the regions of Daegu, Daejeon, Sejong and we have uh, collected 1400 uh, samples uh, and we have analyzed uh, the antibodies as well as neutralizing antibodies and we are conducting our uh, inspections by the experts and we believe that the outcome will be revealed very soon. On top of that, we are also conducting our surveys on the antibodies and in order to increase its um, accuracy, we have been conducting uh, with the uh, 1300 uh, medical practitioners in the Tegu and Tegu region and we also have carried out uh, uh, the samples uh, collected the samples of about 10,000 uh, new um, soldiers and of trainee soldiers and as soon as we have the final result we will disclose it to the public and as for the therapeutics we have mentioned this numerous times but the therapeutics uh, the as for the plasma treatment we have conducted uh, that we have concluded the uh, 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 approval for the second uh, trial of the clinical uh, testings and we are carrying out human trial on the COVID-19 patients to discover uh, their efficacy and safety and we also uh, are increasing uh, in developing our second uh, phase of the uh, hyper uh, new, uh, hyper immunoglobin and we are also uh, expected to reveal this going forward very soon and we have also carried out our approved uh, of the first round of clinical trial and we have uh, have the results of the first clinical trial and we will be disclosing these results as well and in the UK we are also the uh, the vaccine uh, the uh, therapeutics um, clinical trial is also ca uh, being carried out right now and as for uh, the uh, treatment here in South Korea we are also collecting our uh, participants for our uh, clinical trials and in September we will also have a, mo a mass production of the commercialization of uh, the uh, plasma treatment and the uh, antibody treatment as well and as for the remdesivir we have administered uh, the drug to uh, 247 uh, people patients nationwide and as for the life uh, quarantine uh, measures we have the uh, life uh, the safety e reports uh, run by the safety ministry and we have been reported uh, of a case that in a grocery store people had gatherings and they have raffle events and they were um, concerned of possible uh, mass outbreak uh, please note that in order to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus, please refrain from going out to stores and postpone non-essential outings and meetings. And if you have to go outside, please wear your face mask. And you have to always cover your nose and mouth completely when you wear face mask. And you shall not touch the surface of the face mask. And also, please abide by these uh, guidelines going forward. Weeping, 
And as for our briefing, we have a few announcements. Today, we have um, 120 new local infections, and continuously we have uh, our uh, on-day increase daily new cases within the range of 100. However, the downward trend, the speed of the downward trend is quite slow. This means that the cluster infections in the metropolitan area has created a large chains of transmissions and continued chains of transmissions, as well as silent spreaders, as well with our outside our uh, quarantine uh, capacity. And we have reported of the five additional fatalities, and we are highly concerned of the fatalities among uh, the uh, senior citizens and those in the high-risk group. However, we have some positive signs as well. We have a um, stop in the continued exponential surge in the number of uh, confirmed cases, and we are continuing to witness a continued downward trend. And in the Gwangju and Gyeonggi-do province, we have a downward trend as well, and it's, uh, they are uh, these uh, uh, cities and provinces are uh, the only ones that have um, double-digit numbers, and these were all possible thanks to the uh, proactive participation taken by uh, the members of the public, and as for uh, those uh, operators and business owners of the high-risk facilities as well as the self-employed, they had to go through a lot of endurances as well. We would like to thank you once again, uh, but also apologize to you at the same time, and we believe that this week will be a critical moment in making a true downturn in the number of confirmed patients. And if we succeed in making this um, uh, outcome uh, possible, we believe that this will be an invaluable uh, experience and lesson learned by the cooperation of the public. And if uh, we look at many Western European countries that are uh, seeing a resurgence of the outbreak, however, failing to curb the containment, uh, we have great strength and great energy in the people of uh, the Republic of Korea in that we are controlling the virus to a large extent. And we believe that you should be proud of yourselves. Moreover, once the COVID-19 is spread at a very fast pace, uh, in order to flatten the curve again, we have learned uh, that uh, an invaluable lesson uh, that it is uh, it takes a lot of endurance and pr perseverance of the public in order to flatten the curve. And we talked to you about the trends of the vaccine and therapeutics development. We sincerely hope that these R&D achievements as well as the supplies of vaccines. We hope uh, that next year's Chuseok will be starkly different from that of this year. However, this means that during the Chuseok this uh, this uh, year, it will be a very different uh, holiday than uh, the previous ones, and we need to highlight the importance of safety and health. And this will be also a time to, for us to exert uh, quarantine uh, measures, and we sincerely hope uh, that we will have a COVID-19 vaccine which is safe and effective before uh, the Chuseok of next year, and we hope that all of us can be vaccinated. And we understand understand there are a lot of challenges. However, we need to contain uh, the virus and we need to flatten the curve. And please look at other countries that are going through uh, great resurgences in the virus. And please endure with us even longer. And please stay safe and sound until we have a flatten we have a successful flattening of the curve. And please wear your face mask at all times. And please refrain from handshaking. And always keep two meters of healthy distance and wash your hands on a regular regular basis and get tested as soon as possible if you have symptoms and always think of the high risk groups uh, around you. Thank you very much.
Right, that was Tuesday's afternoon briefing by Kwon Januk, the vice head of KCDC. Sua, what was the focus of his address today? Well, although the country is seeing a decline in cases, Kwon Januk mentioned how there are concerns over the management of continuous cluster infections and silent spreaders as well. And uh, just taking a look at some of the new recent uh, emergences of cases, we do not only have new cases related to the Sarangjeil Church in the capital Seoul and the August 15th rally, but also new cases at other religious facilities, at a call center, at a kindergarten, as well as a sauna. So we can see the sporadic cluster infections are continuing. And this is why Kwon mentioned that this year's Chuseok is expected to be a little different for people because everyone should try to focus on safety and health, as well as not only your own health, but people around you, especially the elderly people. And uh, he asked for the people to uh, keep in mind how other countries have been dealing with uh, numerous resurgences in cases and we do not want to uh, want that to happen here in Korea. Well, of course not. Right, so well, thank you very much for that. We'll see you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. A worrying trend, as we've been saying about the latest outbreak of COVID-19 here in Korea, is the rising number of patients in critical condition and the related rise in debt toll. And speaking of which, as of this Tuesday, 341 people have lost their lives uh, to coronavirus here in Korea and the country's fatality rate stands at 1.59%. We have more details in this following report. The global death toll from the COVID-19 pandemic now stands at nearly 900,000. A joint study conducted in September by a team of researchers from China and the U.S. estimated the latest mortality rate at 4.54% for the globe. Scientists are also hard at work to determine which strains of COVID-19 are especially lethal to those afflicted. The mortality rate is a ratio of the number of deaths from the coronavirus divided by the total number of patients, but it's dependent on many variables such as healthcare access and the true number of infections. Korea has seen a notable uptick in the number of deaths over the past month in the aftermath of a resurgent outbreak concentrated in the Seoul capital region. Many experts attributed this phenomenon to the growing number of elderly patients in the country. 코로나 19를 앓고 있는 상황에서 전신 장기의 산소 공급이 충분하게 이루어지지 않는 그런 경우들이 생길 수 있는데 특히 어르신들 같은 이제 고령층들은 각 장기의 기능도 떨어져 있는 상태고 이런 상황에서 이제 기저 질환이 악화하고 각 장기의 기능이 떨어져서 사망하는 경우가 이제 생기고 있는 것 같습니다. According to Korean health authorities, the mortality rate for patients under the age of 50 was seen at a mere 0.15% whereas more than 20% of patients over the age of 80 died from the illness. Research has also found that men are more likely to die from COVID-19 compared to their female counterparts. In the moment of the, the infection, the, the, the infection fatality rate began to rise. And it is especially marked the difference uh, in, in elder ages. Uh, so uh, males have uh, quite a higher uh, probability of dying than women uh, when they are infected with this disease. Although more studies are needed in this regard, researchers hypothesize that this gender discrepancy may be due to the inherent differences in the male and female immune systems. Notable differences in the mortality rate were also observed when comparing statistics between countries in Asia and Europe with Italy reporting a death rate that was eight times higher than that of Korea. One research has found that genetic factors may have contributed to the low mortality rate among Koreans. The study showed that, in Koreans, a certain protein encoding gene behaved in a manner that improved the COVID-19 patient's chances of survival. Despite what these research findings might suggest, experts agree that effective disease prevention measures must still be practiced by all members of the public.
정부는 방역 수칙을 고의로 거부하고 은폐하고 방해하는 행위가 근절될 때까지 단속과 점검을 더욱 철저하게 강화하겠습니다. 
and the other civil, uh, protests uh, or other civil protests. So it's been uh, there's been a lot of action on that, a lot of uh, resistance. Professor Sung, here in Korea, there have been indemnity lawsuits being filed mm -hmm. by uh, the government against uh, organizations and individuals seen to have flagrantly violated safety me measures to further endanger the health of the public. Uh, what impact do such legal actions have on overall containment efforts? Right. For insurance benefits, uh, this cost recovery for fraud or unlawful activities, they're, they're quite uh, standard. And in fact, in Korean laws, uh, it's provided in the uh, 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 health insurance laws, and they indicate whether there, if there's a fraud situations or if there's a lack of report or they don't, if they don't listen to the instructions from the authorities, uh, there are legal bases that they, they can be uh, indemnified or uh, they can be sued uh, to recover the the, the costs. I think. That's not been done in, in, in uh, great degrees, uh, but there are a, lo a lot of talks about whether uh, government should go after it. I, I think the overall effect is that uh, government is trying to dis discourage people from violating these laws for political or other reasons. I think that people should take uh, their responsibilities very seriously because this is something that can uh, spiral out of control very easily for the actions of very small group of people. Right. Professor Chair, another trend of much concern is the spike in cases after long holiday weekends. Now, we have the five-day Chuseok holiday coming up starting from the 30th of September, which is a Wednesday, and it will last until the 4th of October, a Sunday. Now, authorities have advised against travel and extended family gatherings during this holiday. What more can be done to ensure safety? So I think there are two ways of concerns for family get together or visiting their relatives and uh, national holidays like Chuseok. So one is rather theoretical that when we do the disease prediction using the mathematical models, the mixing of the population across the locations, like the including household, workplaces and schools and so forth, do, this will all contribute in increasing of the epidemic size regardless of the different scenario. And another is our experience in the beginning of the global outbreak, if you remember back in January, when there was a lunar New Year's holiday in China that just coincided, coincided with the emergence of COVID that just spread across the country and over the borders. So I agree with the government's warning to keep ourselves from visiting families and relatives from this Chuseok. But if that is not realistic in some cases, um, still the standard precautions to protect yourself is the same keeping the physical distancing as much as you can ideally one to two meters away always wear the mask uh, wash their hands and especially if you're at a higher risk of becoming serious after getting COVID, it is recommended to minimize the new like the interactive activities uh, and regardless of that professor Sung, very worried about the dramatic a possible dramatic rise in during the chuseok holiday some are calling for a ban on travel altogether is such a ban possible under korea's current legal framework well any kind of emergency situations uh, you, your basic rights can be abridged uh, for the, the that kind of compelling uh, government uh, interests so uh, it can be done but we have not been doing that. Uh, I, I think that at this point, we have kind of developed the, the capacity to manage the situation. So far, it has been uh, not a situation where some, uh, like other countries, uh, you have to have a very hard and, and draconian measures. So uh, despite the le legal possibilities of doing that, I, I think the more important issue is whether, uh, not only the government, but people develop this a capacity to deal with this emergency situation, not only for this uh, pandemic, but uh, any number of other uh, situations that might come in a public health or other situations. So in that sense, this is a real test uh, for uh, kind of cooperations and also uh, kind of a civic capacity to deal with the, the emergency situation that happens to be a pandemic at this point. Right. Mr. Krugel, I understand in the U.S. there has been a rise in lawsuits by workers claiming that they were infected as a result of their employer's negligence. Do tell us more about this, please. 
Sure. You're, we're seeing an increase in lawsuits and agency complaints with agencies like the U.S. Department of Labor and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. So you have people who are basically filing an individual and class action both. And then also you have wage and hour complaints for uh, continuation of wages during the downtime or furloughs or layoffs that result from loss of jobs, uh, whether it's temporary or permanent. So there's been an, uh, and we're a litigious society to begin with. So this is, uh, it's within our nature to sue one another. Uh, so it's part of this. And we're dealing with it as best we can. I think uh, Professor Song alluded to this before. We have a legal framework or structure or infrastructure for dealing with these issues. Part of the problem is we don't have the people power to actually execute or administer it. So. I see. Professor Sung, as part of level 2.5 social distancing in the metropolitan area here in Korea, dining and uh, drinking establishments, including restaurants and coffee uh, shops, have been asked to adopt the QR code based registration to keep a log right. on all the patrons there. Unfortunately, it appears that the personal information of these visitors to these establishments is being poorly managed. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I noticed that myself. Uh, QR code is a little bit better because you don't see what other people have gone through. But there are some establishments where you have a, uh, a sheet of paper where you write down your name and phone number. And, you know, uh, by definition, your, your location data and your personal information is right there to be seen. So in that sense, I, I think that we have to uh, focus on the personal data maintenance and how we deal with it and how they are deleted, and as far as I know, there are not uh, uh, very concrete and clear guidelines about how those uh, shopkeepers have to uh, uh, maintain those records and when to destroy it, and so on and so forth. So in that sense, I, I think this is one of the homework that uh, we have to address, because uh, at this point, some people might be, well, it's just the name, and. If you, if you look at just the phone numbers, what, do you, what can you do with it? But if you aggregate all those uh, data, uh, the, the potential misuse is uh, still there. So in that sense, the government has to look at what kind of guidelines do they could issue and what kind of, kind of normal routine uh, can, can be set in the society where if you do business, then you have to take care of the personal information of the people and uh, the record keeping routines and so on and so forth. Right. Mr. Krugel, are there any legal mechanisms at the state or federal level that seek to balance public well being and personal freedom in the US? Yeah, there are. And like we discussed a little bit uh, earlier, or we alluded to, we have these laws and these structures in place. Whether or not we have the people to administer or execute it is debatable. But we do have the civil right. We have civil rights laws. We do have occupational safety and health laws. So they're in existence. Uh, we're seeing, and we're and we're seeing greater. We're trying. We're seeing greater levels of enforcement, uh, and we're tr we're seeing the government's trying to enforce to a greater extent. Part of the problem is that there's this push or pull between state and federal or state, local and federal governments in the U.S. So we don't really have much of a national policy or program relative to COVID-19 management. Uh, so the states and regions and uh, municipalities, individual localities have had to fill in for themselves. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, that's just the way it's played out here. Professor, for better or worse. I see. Professor Chair, here in Korea, there is clearly some friction between the emergency powers being exercised by the government amid the pandemic and the individual rights as guaranteed by the Constitution. What can be done to ease this friction and to ensure a joint effort, perhaps, in fighting the pandemic? So I think we are seeing a greater use of the robust um, social distancing measures like uh, closing the schools and canceling the public meetings and so forth. Um, they also give like number of the logistical challenges and the increase in the risk of those who people who are living in the restricted areas. But from the, our perspective of the public health, at this moment, the flattening of the curve, meaning the slowing the spread of the COVID across the space of time, is very critical at this moment. And the healthcare system just cannot sustain a massive influx of infectious disease cases to the um, emergency department and the hospitals. So I think um, counterbalancing between the public benefit in terms of their uh, legal rights, and human rights, and the right to be healthy, I think the response to the COVID requires some newer, more creative 
the interdisciplinary tools from from the public health side and the legal side as well. Mm-hmm. And I think in this time we need a the public health law that emphasize more of the support rather than the restriction in all matters. Professor Sung, there are individuals and businesses uh, reportedly exploiting loopholes in the current social distancing uh, guidelines. For instance, there have been reports of groups of people gathering or holding small gatherings outside of the metropolitan area for religious or sales purposes, both activities which have been linked to sporadic cluster infections. I suppose adjustments will constantly be necessary uh, to better address these issues then. Right. Uh, The the uh, loopholes have to be plugged and that will benefit the, the overall impact and also effect of the, the quarantine efforts. Uh, however, we have to be transparent about what the situations are. I, I think that those people are desperate to pursue what they believe to be uh, in, in terms of religious activities, probably some people are very bent on uh, uh, following the, the edict or their way of worshiping. I, I think in that sense, uh, what is more important is whether there is the social compact or social understanding of why this is necessary and why everybody have to be uh, pitching in. So in that sense, more dialogue, maybe uh, there might be some debates at first, but I think that Korea was, has been moderately successful in being very transparent about the whole situation, uh, letting people know what the situation exactly it is and the expertise have been uh, uh, very much uh, on hand to explain things. So I, I think it has to continue. And also at the same time, if people don't really cooperate, probably uh, under the current legal framework, uh, that a measure has to be further developed. I see. All right, Professor Sung, as always, thank you for your thoughts. Professor Che, all the way in Chuncheon, Gangwon Province, thank you for joining us live. And Mr. Krugel, all the way in the U.S., thank you for making the time to join us live with your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, that brings us to the end of Tuesday's coverage of COVID-19. Tomorrow, we bring you more on the after effects uh, suffered by those who have survived the infection. In the meantime, do seek to abide by social distancing to ensure your health and that of those around you. See you tomorrow.